All right, so we pick Karachi Control. Obviously, we start bad side. Bad side being the P3 side. Uh, for Dome side, which is the, the quote-unquote good side over here, it was just easier to get on hill and get, you know, top three power position and also, like, watch from short. It was, it was just such an easier way to, you know, get on the hill, especially with how the nades work, too. Trades go down, they win the break off. They send two people top AC and because Ant jumps over one and you know Brandon isn't able to get a kill towards brick side, uh, we're basically, you know, we can't really do anything and they just get on hill. Last guy labs AG, he was the one who went right off the rip. He gets a kill and pitches fountain. Uh, so this is a really good uh, nuisance play, what we would call it, like, because you're basically, I mean, he, he's hitting right off the break just to basically clean up everything, but also uh, have someone you know, on the other team need to watch the pinch and, and watch that side of the map. So AG gets a, a big kill here. These two guys on the hill now have to worry about, you know, their short and people spawning up coming their mid cut or their mid alley. He gets another kill with a nade somehow. I don't know when he threw the nade. Is it right here? Oh yeah, he just needs P1. Okay, I didn't see that. He almost gets three right there. But, uh, you know, Ant's there for the trade. We break back on a huge, you know, huge 25 seconds right there. Dan already taking a new route to P2. This is much needed, especially if you get broken on the P1 going to the P2. This P2 rotation is just so, so massive. Um, you know, just getting early position over here and being able to push out ticket if you're on this side is, is just a really, really good play. And it also, like, if you start holding it and then you could start, like, pushing through here, you flip them out to the back alley, and now you have an ability to chain P2 to P3. So P2s were really, really, really important on this map. Look at this timing. AG takes the route for us. Dan hears a call out that Ant's top, uh, you know, top dome over here. He's looking for it. The timing that he goes to look for it and then push out the front door is the is the timing that AG needs to get towards the back L. Free kill for AG. There's nothing Dan could do. Like, the only thing Dan could have done was eliminate the shortcut and go around deep here and, and eliminate that. Um, that's, that's the only unfortunate thing for there, but obviously he was also having to pay attention for Ant, who was in their base kind of finessing. But once again, you're, they're still spawning back alley. So it's still easier for them to get towards new and just hop over the wall, get to L, uh, and play for these kills because they're just spawning closer compared to us. That's another reason why dome side was just better off the break because going into that rotation of P2, you're just going to have the better spawn for it. Brandon, big kill on, on hill. He kills Dan on hill, and then he kills uh, Nasty trying to reinforce. That's two kills. Now we can start banging the hill. Unfortunately, Krep is still underneath us. Take it. He gets a two-piece. I mean, that's just a good play by Krep. Uh, big, big plays by Joe Deceives because this is still 30 seconds. You know, we're going to have good spawns for P3, but, you know, this is a still massive 30. If Ken wins that 101, and, you know, I'm assuming AG is going to win this over here, we would have held another 30 seconds plus had a rotation in new. So, again, like the trade, the trades end up going down and we end up having that situation anyways. Um, but that's just because, you know, we're. We're, we're winning good fights around the, around the hill. So, really good position for us. 20 seconds. Now we have rotation and new. They're going to start taking routes uh, themselves because they know... Uh, well, actually, it's a, it's a team decision at that point. It's either you bang old, make sure no one is at old anymore, and then you hit through you know, the left side, or you just come off your spawn and you take routes towards the right side. The only thing with taking routes towards the right side is you 
you know, if you lose those gunfights, you're kind of fucked for the next part of the hill. Um, but if you hit old, there's a good chance that you win, you know, let's say 15 seconds, and then you have a break opportunity from, uh, from the top right side. So they decide, you know, let's just cut our losses, take, like, give them that 20, or give us that 20, I should say, and just try and secure new. Huge kills. You get the first two bloods, now you know that they're all basically hitting the right side. Maybe one guy might hit old. But again, top three control for LAT. They, they take these routes early. Nasty's already top three. He gets a kill. Even though we got kills towards this junk side, they still have pressure towards middle and top three for this next P3. We should spawn out here. I think, actually, Ant gets a close spawn, but Ken gets a deep spawn. So it's not a, not a clean rotation for us. Because they're, they all fully hit, you know, the right. No one hits old for them. <laughs> the fuck happens over here? We get the kill in the back, which is huge. But AG just beats down Ant for some reason. I don't know. We're fucking team killing. This is a good route by Kramp. Taking a red route. Everyone else is going to go right side. This is the 3-1 push. We as our team are going to be looking for coop kills knowing that they're going to spawn here because number two just spawns here but he spawns a little bit deeper so we should technically know in the moment that someone's pinching yeah bottom red or pinching through red and he's going to play a kill he's going to play a spawner kill because he knows that you know ant just spawned right behind him so that's a, that's a free kill for Kramp. And now they're breaking from all sides. They're breaking through mid, they're breaking from right side, they're breaking from left side. This is a good play by Brandon. You just hold tight, see if you can watch out through mid, like hold this mid angle, but also make sure that he, you have the coop overextend. And the guy on the hill kind of just has to play his one-on-one -on -one for anyone who's, who was coming right. That's what AG's doing. He wins a gonna fight, huge. And now we know all of them are coming coop. Good play by Ken, he goes mid, everyone else, just focus coop side. He can he can play for anyone that might like spawn up, go top AC, try and take a mid route. So we're covering he's covering mid, they're coming or covering the the, the coop side. This is a a really good setup. I mean, on the other side for them, LET, all you need to do or I mean what you need to do really is hopefully win this one-on-one -on -one gunfight towards mid side, keep this top three pressure, and try and you know, try and make a play to jump out and kill this guy over here. Kill the guy closest to time. So they end up breaking through the group side, but it's only 15 seconds. From here in this position... A lot of teams would first try and get progression towards Fountain and also like try and hit through old. Hitting through old was big because a lot of teams just wanted to play for the top three side for P4. So you get progression Fountain, you try and hit old, you try and get spawns for the P4 so that you're not only getting you know pretty good spawns and, and position top three and can look over people on time and, and you'll have them spawn in the back, but it's also a really good way to change for the P5 on the next hill. So they know what we're trying to do. They're contesting as well, and they get some kills over here, knowing that we're going to try and hit the roll. That's just like a common play for teams to do. And now we don't have really, you know, the great spawns. But again, here, here's another out by Ant. Instead of, instead of going and, and backing Brandon up and trying to hit through Fountain here, try and break from here and still spawning in the back alley, which is bad for the P5, you try and take a route here. Try and flip out for the P5. Like you're giving up this P4 time, but you're, you're trusting that your team's going to try and make this mixy. Maybe they get the guy off time and you're going to try and, and work for the P5 spawn. 
Ant gets his timing, even though Nasty is looking for it, he's a little bit late on it because Ant took it really, really early. Like, really early. So Ant gets a free kill on this guy in the back. Now, great position because you have two guys, both really can't get on the hill because they're just in awkward positions. And if they get on the hill, we have top three control where we can just kill them off, off time anyways. Now they start spawning diner. It's big for us because we're spawning or because we're, we're blocking this back alley spawn to know that they're going to be spawning, you know, somewhere around here. So it's big for at least like Ant and maybe even number three if he gets a kill to start wrapping towards the right side too. Fortunately, Dan makes a, a big two piece there, but we do keep the spawn. So number two and number three are going to be looking for P5, uh, P5 rotators. They don't take anyone the, to go low or anything. They, they just hit through old and one guy goes through mid. But one of these guys could have technically just gone through, gone to junk, but it would have been there anyway. So 10 seconds remaining here, and what, Joe, the really the point man on the other side is going to be Joe Deceived, but he's collapsing with two other players. Do you have a chance to change this together right now if you're Thieves? Yeah, I did see Shotzi, so Shotzi's going to be a position... You didn't see Ant. That's surprising. ...try to have an impact here. Back over to Dashie, we will go. So what happened here is Kremp ends up winning that 1v1. He was the guy who hit mid for us, or for them. Instead of spawning back alley because one of our guys spawned back alley, they spawn diner now, so they... They have a better break on it. I'm I'm surprised we didn't spawn P3. Oh, we don't spawn P3 because because this guy is technically like contesting it. I think. Plus, it's like white time. So because it's it's white time, we're they're technically like in a gunfight here. So it doesn't want to spawn him P3. Uh, we spawn out. I'm surprised Joe Deceives doesn't see Ant here. Ant is just proning underneath this garbage can. Now they see him. He's going to fess his, his way through P3. He just needs to stay alive here. He knows he's, he's, they're blocking spawns. They're going to be spawning out super deep. As long as they can keep him off hill and get any kills in this area and stay alive just to be annoying here, he's doing his job. That's what he does. He gets one, gets straight out. But we're still banging the front of the hill. Ken's in the back here. He, he knows that Nasty's here because he killed Ant. We still spawn Coop side, so we're, we're still spawning close, and we can play for this guy. We need to get this kill. Because we can't let this guy stay alive as long as possible. Finally get the kill. Now we have to look frontwards. We're spawning out. AG's spawning out. We know one guy's middle. We know one guy's top three. They're, they both shot. Joe actually gets a two-piece front side. That's just a huge, I mean, that's just a huge two-piece. It's weird because they, these guys, they can't like hide from top three. They, they have, in order to hide from top three, they'd have to expose themselves to, to Joe Deceives. And Ant's in a gunfight towards middle here. So it was just a big play that uh, this guy, whoever's stayed alive here, whoever's going to spawn up, nasty, stay alive for so long because we had to look for him. Again, for this whole map, I, I think LHT just played it well. I don't really think there's so much we could have done differently that would have been, you know, difference makers. I think they just played this well. So, like I said before in the LAG match, going to that second P1, it's such a big hill. As long as you're trying to force your way up through uh, the right side, you know, holding top three, um, holding fountain, like holding hill, like as long as you're getting this high ground here, that's like the best case scenario for, for, you know, rotation two P one. Huge kills. There is a team kill that goes there, but again, what is, what does everyone do? Off hold fountain route. I talked about it in the video. You have to be aware of the fountain route. We have our top three. We have time. Unfortunately, Brandon dies from the fountain route. This guy just, you know, 
I guess you should, you could say AG has to take timings where he's either he's watching low and he's watching, you know, the top found route. But we need to know that this guy off old is taking this route, hundred percent, because we should not be dying on time like that. That's just every every team's gonna be taking that that timing. But what do you know? You can bail yourself out, and that's what AG does. He has an insane two piece here on the guy time and on the guy short. AG with an AR. Uh, this is a big this is a big thing that happened later on in the season, but because of the the MCW change, AJ was using an AR a lot. Like basically all of Karachi's, he would just use it. And Karachi was basically a three AR map for us. Now you have to figure out where they're spawning. Off of this three piece, you figure out okay, are they spawning P3 or are they spawning junk, right? If they're spawning junk. Ken, or sorry, Brandon needs to get over here to cover a rotation of P2. Because if they just push through here and, and start holding like P2 and getting kills, maybe flipping you out and they start spawning here, that's not good for us because we want to chain this. We're, you know, technically down here. If we hold the rest of this, we're up. But a chain after four dead is what you want. Hey, Middleton, appreciate the sub. Appreciate the, the one month. So we don't see anyone spawning P3. No one's coming mid lane. Brandon needs to be on his high horse to, to get kills over here. That's what he does. He gets one, stays alive, top top fire. Unfortunately, he dies to a guy top single. But you see how they flipped out the spawns because they all all went this way. So this is gonna give us you know the basically the full twenty, but they're gonna have they're gonna have spawns and, and um, positioning for new. And I, like I talked about before in the, the first one, it's it's just really important to to get to new early, especially for the P two. Now, AG is on an absolute insane seven piece, right? Or seven street. We get these kills. We know that they're going to be spawning in the back here. We need to start cutting towards new. Again, initial positioning is huge. Off of this seven, seven streak, you get the fuck off time. We have Ant, who's top three. He can get time. You bump everyone off and just start going fast, fast, fast. Get to new as, as early as possible. You know they're gonna be back alley. You know they're either gonna have to take a longer route through the long or, or have to hop over this wall and get to new. So you wanna be able to make sure that you can get any kills fire and cut anyone trying to jump over as fast as possible. This is how big timings are in Call of Duty. Like you need to be instantly sprinting to get this. Because you get this kill, you're instantly sprinting. Now look at these guys. They're going to be hopping over. Like, one guy's already looking towards you, so there's nothing you could have done about that. But like, let's say let's say he'd spawned a little bit deeper, and it was just number seven and eight hopping over. AJ gets another two, probably. Or at least one. Great play by Ken. He's the second in line. Now, instead of, you know, hopping over and just giving away your life because you know multiple are going to be back alley, or sorry, back L over here, you hold a progression to ticket. At this point, we don't have initial positioning because they're already there, right? Now, step two is don't let them get into ticket. Don't let them get forward positioning so they're both ticket and they're on new and they can kind of like maintain all that control. Force them to this one area. Just at least cut them off so that when you eventually try and break, because this is going to be a breaking snare for, you, for us, you are combining them to such a small area and you have such a big area to work with where you don't have to worry about your ticket. If, you, if you're jumping out top single or if you're dumping out top fire, you do not have to look behind you and, and worry about these people. So we hold the progression, we're just staying alive, making sure we, we soak the rest of this time, and then we'll end up baking. Ant's looking just because, you know, technically someone could have uh, gotten there before, like before AG had uh, had originally, um, had really originally cut this off, I think. If we were technically counting, um, I think this is probably just a counting error. Uh, if we were technically counting, we, we would know it was four down and they couldn't have gone, um, you know, two ticket. So maybe like maybe a little error on that part because we're still looking for a guy here. But you know, that's that's something that it's pretty hard in the moment. So now again, we've confined them to this specific area. 
look how tight they have to play this because they couldn't you know freely get into ticket because they couldn't freely hit short or get to lights they have to play super tight here now this gives us all the space to work with look how look i mean look at ant he's already in their front door it's kind of like a blind spot for them because they can't see but look how i mean look how insane this is for them ant gets one through the front door that makes these guys activate look front door what do you know while that's happening who is this ag ag is taking a route back alley to both flip them and to to, to just flank them in general we get two kills last guy last two guys are on the hill we get one now we can teamwork last guy This was so okay. Nasty and, and Krem are able to re-break on in, but this is so unfortunate. This is, I think, where we probably um, could have won the game. So it's just really unfortunate because both Ken and AG are like super one shot in this scenario. So they don't want to scam and just you know take a gunfight and then you know have the other guy take another gunfight. The only thing here is you know Dan's also one shot. I'm not sure if they know that at the moment, but both of them are one shot and that's why both of them aren't really challenging this guy on hill. They just don't want to scam and, you know, both die. So if there's anything that we could have done differently, I think is, you know, if they just both challenge, I'm not sure they, they know though. So it, it's, you're just, it's a super hard scenario. And unfortunately, Nasty just gets a two piece on them after, you know, they end up killing him. But I think if, if, if at least one of them was full health, I think we win that hill and that's completely different because that's that's 40 seconds off out on that break that we could have had. GMAC, appreciate the two months. Thank you, man. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, I'll be uploading this to YouTube. So it, I think what went wrong there is just both of them end up being one shot. So both of them don't want to chow. And that's just really unfortunate because that could have been that was a really good break attempt out of us. Now they're holding. We're still spawning junk. At a certain moment, we have to start, you know, caring for this this new rotation like they did in, in the previous one. We're not able to get anything going here because they're staying alive in ticket. Now we start spawning out. We have to stay alive here, useless. Ant gets a kill here, so that's huge. They start spawning out now because we're blocking the useless spawn. We should be knowing if we're counting that one guy has still made it towards new though. So not the best hill out of us. We had the break attempt. It was just an unfortunate scenario where both Ken and AG were, were super one shot. So now we, f we find this guy in the back here. Brandon unfortunately can't kill him. But because Kremp has stayed alive here and wins this one on one, it's just so massive. Because now basically number ha two has to play for him. Number one and number three are so far pushed out that they can't, you know, run backwards and help him out because if either of them run backwards they get killed by by spawners you know so these guys just have to hold their ground and it just it's basically on ant just one one v one that's that's all it is at this point cramp wins a one-on-one -on -one. ken wins a one-on-one -on, -one on his side ag unfortunately uh i think he gets one and dies so they're not holding the hill ken has to stay alive because he knows that they're going to be spawning bridge here because obviously we, we're spawning diner. We know that they're useless. So he needs to just stay alive here as, as well. It's just, it's super tough because Kremp just makes the play here. Because he's, he's last alive, he gets through. It, it's honestly on, on us for, for dying at old like this towards this ticket side. It kind of fucks us up because it spawns us out. So even though, you know, Ant wins the gun battles over here, like the trades, this guy getting back here kind of just loses the rotation regardless. And it, it's very hard to be like, oh, let's let's double work anyone in the back because he could be anywhere. He could be anywhere over here. That he could be here. He could be here. He could be back here. He could be in the in the room. He could be on the hill. So I don't know. I don't know what you would do in this situation. Like maybe maybe you, I mean it's it's hard to not look for him. So if, let's say you say Brandon and Ant just leave him here and you just focus on the kills. It's very hard because he can fuck up everything if you're not accounting for him while everything else is going down. Um, 
So I don't know. I guess you, I guess you have to look for him. I don't remember the comms in this moment if we knew one guy was in the back. I think I think Brandon's just checking just to check. Uh, but I, I would have to go back in the comms and, and see. And that just fucks up the entire P5. So it's, it's again, when you're going up against a good hardpoint team, like LAT, one little mistake or one little thing that could have gone a different way can completely be the change. And I think it, I think it stems from that, that P2 uh, break attempt. I'll get to you, your questions after this map. I'll, uh, I'll take a break after this map. I'll catch up with the chat. <laughs> now we're just spawning in different areas. We're trying to break on in. It's just it's very difficult, especially when you're trying to break from the coop side if you don't have top three control already. You see what Ken was saying? They got to play through old because we know, they know, everyone just plays through old uh, P3 to get like the coop spawns. Or to, sorry, maintain coop, coop control, get the P3 spawns for P5. And what did I say before? What's the better side? The side with the vertical advantage and the side with rotation to P5. You spawning back alley here, it's such a difficult scenario, especially when you're down 70. It's not like, it's kind of, it, it, you basically have to play for this time. It's not like you can have just Ken just run and do the same thing Ant did because you're now down 70 or close to 70. So you have to, you have to make a decision. You basically have to play for this time. You can't really do that rotation because you might, if you don't win the gunfight, if you don't, or if you trust your teammates to win the gunfights on the hill and they don't, you're just fucked. So now we get two piece. Now is an opportunity for AG to do it. But again, you lose time. He ends up winning a one-on-one -on -one gunfight on new. Now he has just to stay alive back here. But we're still not on P4. They're still holding old. And he dies here. They get kills wrapping towards the P5, knowing that we're going to you know, try taking those ticket routes. And now they have a P5 hold. Brand, or, sorry, Dan wins a huge one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Middle, we have top, two, top three control. And tries to win a gunfight jumping out. Unfortunately, he gets caught too. Ant dies over here, but it gets straight out instantly. Now we just, we have to break on in. Unfortunately, Dan is probably in a good position to kill AG right here. But this is our only opportunity to kind of break this, really. And AG actually wins that. Holy shit, he actually won that. For some reason, I thought he lost it. Since he wins that gunfight, he's going to also be able to kill Joe here. Or uh, Brandon actually just wins it. They actually spawn in the back. We actually, th I think they think they spawn Coop here. They, they're not expecting him to spawn deep P3. They're actually playing this well, holding this from the front. Basically trapping them from the back. This is a really good hold from the front. AG, AG just made the fucking play with his kills middle. Alright, so we get the old time. You see what they're doing here? Already getting top three control. If you can't get old, you at least got to get top three. AG takes a found route. This is a really good route. Again, off of old P5, people take found routes to get these kills top three and counter this. Every team is doing it. Unfortunately, he doesn't see Dan over there, and he gets caught out. They win the kills fire. We actually get a kill top third, but we're spawning diner here. And this is a weird parallel spawn that happens sometimes where you're, you're, you're spawning diner while they're also spawning back alley. So it's like this weird race to the hill. 
No, and then they win this rotation, right? They stop the first wave. They find three kills. Kenny is through, though, towards top three. Do they pick that up? Josie, though, in a great position, and that's going to be another three. And they just, they just win the... They just win those gunfights. It's hard because, again, they're on time. They're already top three control with number six. One guy took a plat route so he can kill anyone that's going short. This is a good play by Dan. And they just... They just end up winning here. Again, like, really good plays by LET. They they played that map really well. I think it really just comes down to that that P2, P3 chain where, especially the P2, where we could have broken with that really good break attempt, but it was a 2v1 with both people on our team, like, super weak, and I don't think they knew Dan was weak, if I remember correctly. So, maybe a little miscom there, but honestly, we actually, I feel like we played the rest of the map pretty decently for what, like, the opportunities we had.